So now, um, obviously, I want to get into these practical tools. And I'm going to give you a few, few, but in the bonus slides, I'm going to give lots. And the other thing I'm going to give you is I am not the specialist at speaking or singing or doing all these things. I have other people that I know that have specialist tools, and there's lots I'm going to give to you, things like warming up your voice and those kind of things. And we're going to do just a couple and, and, and what I want to say is these practical tools are where we're going to be able to achieve those results that we're looking for. So we're going to actualize ourselves now. And um, Kung Fu Panda, it's an animated movie three. So anyone that's got children's probably been there. Master Shifu says something and he says, if you only do what you can do now, you will never be more than you are now. So this is about taking those tools and doing something with them now you know and and just knowing that in this um this action and this actuality we're going to self actualize actualize so what i want you to do is i want you to write three columns down if you've got a piece of paper next to you hopefully um short pencil you know the story uh, and so um if you've got a piece of paper or you've got your fancy devices and notes that you're taking on your ipad or whatever it is you're doing you know because we all know there's the new world um i want you to do three columns i want you to do one column that's got the title start doing and then i want you another one that says doing and then i want you to do another column that says to stop doing and what does that mean things i need to start doing that i'm not doing yet things that i need to keep doing okay to continue to do to do to activate and then ones i need to stop doing as i sort of work through a few of these things so we're going to start with preparation meets opportunity you know and that's about who is your audience or your avatar you need to know them the accumulation of all the things that you have um, put together you want to you want to put those all together and you want to think to yourself who is the person the audience the, the the businesses the people that i want to serve and and try to identify it as a group but with one avatar in mind like in and look at what other things that they represent and what do they do and it's very important to do research because how can i give a relevant story or offer if i haven't researched my audience and then the next um, thing is about transparency so you will see behind me um, I've got a setting and I'm showing it. I don't have a green screen for this because, you know, this is one of those talks where I'm showing you who I am. I'm where I am. It's evening and I'm showing you what's going on. But I set the scene. I prepared it and I prepared it deliberately with these white lilies, which are for purity and rebirth. They haven't come out yet. Sorry about that. That was where I didn't prepare well enough. And then um, the yellow lilies for thankfulness. You'll see those over this shoulder. Okay. And then I've also got in the corner because I love South Africa. I love my home. I love Africa and I live there and I love it. So I, you can see I've got a book there that says <laughs> Animal Kingdom. And then I've got something of uh, evolving yourself, okay, in a picture off to the side. And so it's deliberately positioned and I'm dressing in something that's just simple for me so that, that you can take in the scene without it being overwhelming with lots. So it's to think about these things. So ask yourself, do I dress for myself and what I wanna be like? And do I set the scene for first myself, but then for those that are gonna be with me? Okay, and then um, what would you be prepared? Would you be prepared to pay someone who thinks about these things more? Would you be prepared you know, if they set the background, they set the scene for you, they thought about you, they had water, I've got lemon, lemon and mint. Just needed a sip, so I had to have an excuse that that was part of my setting. Okay, and uh, for a sip of water, you know I'm a bit crazy, right? <laughs> and then it's about the visual and the hearing. So, so what I want you to remember about a, a webinar is that generally speaking, like the other three senses go down, which help to sort of give the whole sense of what you're trying to create. So what you need to do is you need to work the, the visual, which is what I'm doing, and also work the voice and the hearing. You have, those have to be super enhanced, but also being your authentic self. Then I want to look at knowing your first five minutes. Now, Andy Harrington was my huge help on this. It was like a gold nugget from this three-day course I did. Literally that 
I think he spent 20 minutes on this and it was like, oh my goodness, this makes so much sense. So I'm going to be nervous. I was nervous tonight. I did certain things, breath work, because I care, because I want to give my best. When I'm, I'm not nervous, when I don't care about the person or I don't care about the subject matter, I don't even feel nerves. I'll actually probably say more then. But what we want to do is get through that first five minutes. So if we've got an hour, then we want to know what are we doing for those five minutes. And that means um, we want to talk about a story, remember, and we do want to ask a question to connect. So we want to ask questions that have yes answers. He, he says I, but um, that kind of didn't work. Um, for, for where um, culturally that just wasn't the right thing, um, I felt. So the group, so you modify what you learn from me so that it suits your audience that you've researched. And then you want to go into pain. So pain will be on the right of you because in English, where we're communicating right now, people follow and read from left to right. So it will be when you're presenting or talking on stage, it's going to be your right. And this is going to be pain and past. And then your left, okay, which is their right, is going to be your future, the fantasy, the pleasure. That's when you're talking. And you're giving a story because people want results. And what do they want to do? They want to solve you to help them to solve a pain or a problem, or they want you to give them a result of a pleasure or something they'd love to have, a dream, a fantasy. Okay. And here, when we're in the middle using our hands like this, it's the now. It's the certainty that we're looking for. Okay, so you want to think of a story and know those first five minutes. Then um, we're moving on to some body work. So I hope you're creating in your list, you're writing in your list down now as I'm talking, um, things that you could start doing and um, things that you can keep doing and things that you may want to stop doing that you have been doing for certain situations and discerning when, when you need to do and not do. Um, so body and mind work, I want to mention Amy Cuddy. Um, Harvard Business Rules. She talks about power poses. So what are they? I'm going to lean back. Not hopefully not too far. I might fall off. It could be bad. Um, but you're leaning back, okay? And it's this power position. And she says two minutes of power poses increase testosterone and decrease cortisol levels. Um, we're going to come to breath now. Voice is critical. We want the voice to be able to flow, and we want to have tone. So that's why I went to someone for some help because I didn't think I could sing. And the one thing I was told to do was to choose an inspirational song that I could sing on the way places. So while I was challenging myself in these different speaking areas, different subject matters, um, to see if my tools were working, it was quite hard sometimes, I would be banging out this song and it stopped by Jamelia. And what it is, it's usually songs that are around 18 years of age, just so you know, that you find most inspiring for this purpose and it gets you what it does is it warms up the voice you want something a bit challenging and also it just opens that chest up and it pulls that posture back and it gets you into that space of inspiration and mine was a moment with my sister actually with the song and it was you better stop before you tear me apart and when I went to do this I was asked to actually bang this out and I was like I can't sing what do you mean bang it out and something interesting happenings when it's inspiring and people think they can't sing you know and you actually can do it so practice that in the shower first of course as we all know we do and then go for that one and then um to be funny you know to laugh at yourself I laugh at myself and you know I think I'm pretty funny actually but even if I'm not at least I'm laughing and, and that's quite good because that helps you to sort of decrease those nerves. Um, so so I'm, I'm moving a bit fast now because of time. I can feel myself. But it's the expectations and reflection. And, and, and basically, I want to just make it clear. It's really important to manage your expectations, to think you're going to walk into a room because you're so prepared or to get on a call. And because you really believe in it and you love it, that everyone's going to love you back um, is, is just not always what's going to happen. Okay, so, so it's the, if people are interested like here, they would have had expectations of what this talk was going to be about. And so you'll have an 80% to 20%. 80% are with you and 20%. And this is just a, a, how it can work. But if someone's being forced to go, like they're, they're being told to go to the board meeting or they're being told to 
to, to go to this financial meeting and look at your business um, that you're asking for funding or you, you've gone and you've got this project meeting um, for delivery and you've got to speak, just know that you're going to have more like a 50-50. Walk in there and manage your expectations and remember to stick to your purpose over your perfection. Okay, so stick to purpose over perfection. And if you stay focused on that, it'll work for you. And then you've got the edification, which is the collaboration, like to put this together with Exo Futures. It wasn't me. I've got this beautiful support people with me. So collaborate with people, get people to help you, and then draw on your mentors and your experts and talk about them, talk about how they helped you because that edifies you. And finally, give your evidence and your case studies that you need to give. Now, this is something that I'm going to give to you. So I'm going to just put it up here. But this is to create your own model. So this is for you to be able to simplify your message. Because if it's simple and clear, then you can also see the gaps in your own processes and thinking. And what you want to do is digitize it in some way, shape, or form and design your own unique framework so that you can have fun with it. And once you've done that, you're reflecting on that framework. So you're going to get a live PDF next week that's going to walk you through how to create your own model and that you can work on. So that's why I'm moving on. And just to reflect, to make sure you're constantly reflecting on each engagement and not to subordinate to someone else's way, to someone else's framework, but to rather stay inspired about your purpose and the result and to see failure as feedback, but not a setback. And the example I love to give is I was with the C-suite of 20 women and I was attempting to use um, a lady in New Zealand, my business partner, one of my other business partners, Adrian Gulliver, she laughs at this, her tail model, but she'd never tested it at this level. And I took her model and thought I could fit it into this, this process. And what happened was I got stopped in the middle of the workshop and, and they sort of said, you're not landing it. And it was really, really tough. I, I had to take this feedback and almost throws you back when someone's, you know, when they're telling you you're not there. But I knew inside myself, I wasn't owning it. It didn't like, it didn't feel right. I wasn't in the zone. And so what I said is give me five minutes. And I put the book down and I went back in within five minutes and I turned the workshop around and I did it my way. And the big lesson I learned from that is to do it your own way because then you can own it. Then you can answer questions on it. Um, how are we going for time? What have I got time for? So just checking. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm keeping an eye. You just go. You've got, okay. I'm giving you a so, little bit of extra time. So 10 minutes if you don't mind. Okay, great. So, so what I want you to do um, just in relation to the model, what would be nice to write in the comments section now what is going to, what's your next model? What are you thinking it could be called? And it needs to represent what the sort of outcome is or, and, it, and it's usually a word. So uh, what I prefer that you used is an actual acronym. Um, it's like uh, Liesl used SHIFT for her, mo her model and it just works better because people can remember it and, and they can take it away with them because it's easy. It's like M-O-D-E-L. Whereas if you use alliteration, it's like the five M's. I've learned this. I've gone through this process where I created models and I couldn't even remember what the order were, was myself of each M. So, so it's about choosing a word. And let's see if you've got some ideas in your mind of a word that could represent a process within your current work context, something you could call it, and put some into the comments box there so that we can see what we might be thinking of. Um, is, and, and just throw them in. We've got some coming through. Mike doesn't know, but he's shared his privately with me. So I don't know whether I should read between the lines here, Mike, because it says social, S-O-C-I-A-L. Andrew says way of beauty, W-O-B. Fadi says I take in digest and produce result. I'm going to, wow. oh, there's another one here. I like digest. I love oh, digest. Nice. Wow. Eh? Um, yeah. Then Felicity says, in, in capital letters, create me. Two words, create Beautiful. me. And we've got a new Beautiful. one, which we've been working on, future next. One word, future Craig next. and myself, future next. He actually gave birth to that earlier this week. Beautiful. 
oh, and then a, and then for her dad well done, says, Craig. You next and, and then for dad says uh, driving purpose with creativity dpwc cool stuff dpwc so so remember like what we're doing is we want to make that direct message clear and so what you, you're doing there it's beautiful but you want to know that people can walk away so why i say one word and then work the words from there which you'll see when you get the live pdf is because people can remember it, like drive digest soul agile you know future next so so that's what we're looking to do so just it's not that it's wrong it's just that what happens is you want to be able to create an indirect serve and it's the level and the layers um, which we're getting to which is the ripple effect um, which I'll just go to while I'm on it because of time and just one last the, one this is quite a good one yeah. I know you'll like this yeah. one that's why I'm interrupting apologies that's fine so s-o-a-r stop observe oh. allow rest and that's from Francesca oh beautiful soar well then you'll be presenting you'll be presenting your soar model <laughs> i love it thank you and and so why i'm saying that word and the way it is is once you've built this thing you get to own the process and then you just go out and you test it and you're going to learn from this 